We are Sorted, a group of mates who have your back when it comes to all things food. From cooking battles to gadget reviews Man, it's not worth it. and cookbook challenges to a midweek meal packs app. Crack your eggs, bake. We uncover the tools that'll help us all cook and eat smarter. Join our community where everything we do starts with you. Welcome to Fridge Cam. Today we're going to be talking about tinned food. Good or bad, you're going to help us decide. Now we did one of these before and there were some very good and some very questionable items in tins. Today, more tin treats and I'm going to cook up some stuff with them with a few little tips and tricks uh, along the way as well. I am ready. You know I love meat in a tin from that first video, so I'm excited to see where we can go. Number one, lift the cloche. What on earth is this? We've deliberately taken, obviously, the wrappers and the labels off to see if you can identify what might be inside. Looking at the top, I could make a guess, because that looks like a burger bun. Oh my goodness! <laughs> it's a tinned burger. <laughs> it is a cheeseburger in a tin. I thought we'd start strong. We saw it, we couldn't resist buying it because we were so intrigued. This particular one came from a company in Germany that specialises in trekking food. So the stuff that you might have out in the wilderness, uh, obviously long shelf life, the beauty of all tinned food, and then easy to prepare. Uh, this one, you have the option, but you can just put it in a pan of water and heat it up in the tin before you open it. I really want to try this. What on earth is this going to taste like? Oh, that's a cross section, isn't it? Now, when you can things, there's certain ingredients I just would never imagine canning, and cooked bread is one of those. Going back to some of the positives of tinned food, yep. basically it's a preservation method. So it keeps items safe for consumption without the need for refrigeration, if you are camping, for example. It smells more of brioche than it does anything else. It smells like Christmas. Joy. No. <laughs> Christmas brings me great joy. Does that bring you great joy? It smells like Christmas spices. That does not smell like a burger. It's not delicious. That is not a tasty burger. Um, it tastes very fatty, very oily, very sweet from the bread. And then the meat tastes of, I can't tell you which meat, it tastes of generic meat. It squeaked as I put it in my mouth. So texture wise, everything was the same consistency. What if I told you a tinned cheeseburger was five euros 99? About a fiver. I mean, if you're in the wilderness, you'd eat it, you wouldn't enjoy it. If you're camping, the probability is that you've got access to a fire. Look, we've been camping before and we've created some amazing things outside on open fires and you can definitely cook better, but most of those things need a refrigerator or stuff. So I can absolutely see a place for that. If I'm honest, I chose to start with this one because I thought it was going to get a worse reaction than that. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, you are dealing with the basicest of and um, that's not that bad. <laughs> Number two. Here we go. Oh, now this is what I was expecting. That is, oh, it's really wobbly. Intrigued so far. There's like a brown gravy, unidentifiable meat coming out of it. Do you know what? Actually, it looks like it could be dog food. First impressions from looking at it, dog food. Second impression from sniffing it, barbecue. Barbecue sauce. Feel free to decant it, see if it changes your mind, see if you can identify the meat. Yet again, any food straight out of a tin that's supposed to be served hot never looks good when it's cold. No, it looks meaty. It's like beef in gravy or something. Evans, would that be pulled pork? This man knows his meat. Come Even on. Even in a can. Come on. That is pulled pork in an American style barbecue sauce with lots of molasses. Now the cheeseburger absolutely is just meant to be eaten as cheeseburger. This we've actually done something with. You can actually see the fibres of the pulled pork before it's even been reheated. So, interesting. I would love this to taste good. Bear with me. There you go, Jay. You can lift that little mini cloche. What you have is a pulled pork burrito. Oh, Ebers, I knew it. So you've got some lime and coriander rice, you've got pulled pork, you've got pico de gallo, and a homemade guac. 
the pico de gallo I made and the guac I made in the time that it took to boil up the rice and the pulled pork heated in the microwave in its own sauce in a couple of minutes. So instead of hours and hours and hours of waiting for pulled pork to do its thing, could cheated tinned pulled pork be any good? That's very nice. The barbecue sauce flavour really comes through. It's a very strong barbecue sauce. It's very tangy, very tomatoey, very, very sweet. It's not how I would want pulled pork because it masks the flavour of the pork too much. The pulled pork itself isn't obviously as good as if you slow cooked a pork shoulder. However, if you put that in front of me and I didn't know what it was and tasted it, I'd tell you it was barbecue pulled pork. So it does, absolutely does that job. If I want a 15 minute burrito, then that's the only way I can get that. When you put it into a burrito and you've got rice and you've got guac and you've got everything else going on in there, you can't really tell because it's masked by everything else around it. Interestingly, the cheeseburger does not interest me in the slightest, but if I went camping, yeah, that, absolutely. boil up some rice and cook that, suddenly that might be an easy solution. It does a job. It does, it does a job. It doesn't do the job. In comparison to, you know, a kilo of pork shoulder, which is about seven or eight pounds, I can see where I'd go for it. Mind you, four quid. Oh, what? No, double that and you can get twice the amount of pork shoulder that you yeah. could cook. If I have a craving for pulled pork, I'd rather go to the effort of making it. I'd rather do that and then at the end of the day have an amazing pulled pork dinner and then have it for lunch on Saturday and breakfast on Sunday. It's just there. I'd rather do that than get it from a can. I mean, I'm Great. still gonna eat it. Number three. When I knew we were doing this video, this is the type of thing I expected from you. <laughs> it looks like something that clings to a rock under the sea. I'm guessing it's a fruit and I can... You can. I'll prepare it in a nicer form in a bit, but you can. Stored in brine, so it's probably a little on the salty side. It tastes of vegetable, but like a really diluted, sort of mild vegetable that doesn't taste of enough to be offensive or delicious. I have no idea what that is. That's jackfruit in a tin. So. I don't know if collectively we've ever had fresh jackfruit. I know we have had it as a meat substitute, a meat substitute to pulled pork, sometimes a meat substitute to chicken wings. Yep. Uh, I think we had on a street food stall. Most, if not all UK supermarkets now stock it. I think in Southeast Asia and other tropical climates, they are used as a fruit in themselves. They make great ice cream, they make uh, great smoothies and things like that. But commonly we see it as a substitute or an alternative to meat. Do you know, I'd really like to eat some jackfruit prepared in a way to celebrate jackfruit instead of trying to be something else. Uh-oh, have you just give, have you fried this in like buffalo sauce or something? Let me present you with an idea. Okay. This is not what I was expecting. Oh! <laughs> so what I've done for you is heat up the jackfruit, which I've sliced a little bit with some Chinese five spice and hoisin and then put it into a pancake roll with cucumber and spring onion. So it is replicating duck and hoisin pancakes. So it absolutely, in this instance, is a substitute for duck. It smells exactly like a duck and hoisin roll. It looks amazingly like shredded duck. Some of it looks like leg meat of a duck. Some of it goes nice and crispy, so you get like the crispy bits of, of duck. That is delicious. The texture is like a vegetable. It is fibrous, it ain't any stringy, but it's got that sort of bite crunch of a vegetable, not meat. However, when it's in this, there is no difference whatsoever that I can work out between this and, and a duck and a hoisin pancake roll. Because you're packing so much flavor into it, it has a really great texture to it. The flavor across the whole thing is, is lovely. I really like that. That is such a great substitute. Whether it's a meat substitute or a, a great standalone vegetable or, or fruit, one of the reasons I chose it in a tin is because in a tin, it is so much easier to get hold of, A, and B, to prepare. I don't know if you've seen jackfruit, they're big spiky things that need sort of getting into. And therefore, another reason why tin food can be excellent because it gives you access to ingredients that are already prepared consistently for you without you having to bother. A tin that size uh, from UK supermarket in Brian, £1.60. So, you know, pretty affordable too. The only comment I would make is if you're using it as a meat substitute, nutritionally, it's not. It's really high in fibre, which is excellent. It's high in lots of great things. 
but it is not comparable as a protein source. Meat typically 25% protein, that's about 1%. So it's not comparable nutritionally, but it is very good for you because it's high in fibre and all the other wonderful things. It's amazing. It's really cool. That's a winner for me. Do you want one more? I would love one more. I'd be intrigued to hear what you think about this one. Oh, <laughs> well, we're not off to a good start, are we, Ebers? <laughs> this looks like scrambled egg. Please, please tell me that's not scrambled egg. I genuinely think it might be something you've not tried before. I've only tried it once, and up until today, I've never cooked with it, which is why, yet again, after 10 and a half years, I love what we do. Fish bit out if you want, have a taste. <laughs> and then I'll prepare a dish for you. Mm. Oh. It's like eggy and cheesy, but watery. Gen genuinely, genuinely, genuinely. I wonder if this is because of the unknown, because you don't know what it is, because I promise you it's not that bad. In fact, it's actually quite delicious. I know, but I'm trying. So it's salty. It's got a really nice texture. It's really creamy. Like it goes really smooth when you bite into it. I mean, I'm guessing it's a fruit of some description. So it is Aki. I have heard of this. I had no idea it looked like this. From our research, native to Western Africa, but now one of the national fruits, pretty much, of Jamaica. And they have a dish called saltfish and ackee, which they commonly have for breakfast. Um, in fact, I think it's arguably one of the national dishes of Jamaica. Would you like me to prepare you some? Yes, please, because it must be good. And I'm obviously not eating it in the right way, and that's your fault. <laughs> this is awesome. Okay, great. I can't wait for this. I learnt this dish from two YouTube channels, Chef Ricardo Cooking and the Caribbean Pot. We'll put the links down below. Basically, onion, bell pepper and saltfish fried off in oil, scotch bonnet, thyme, tomato and then the ackee, which is just drained and used as it is. You don't want to cook it too much because it will break down because it's quite soft. That is saltfish and ackee. That is absolutely delicious. Oh, no, see, that is really good. It tastes smoky and spicy and of the sea. It's like sea salty, obviously from the fish. It does the tofu thing of taking on flavour. This sort of melts in your mouth and goes really creamy. And in a dish like this, like you can absolutely see why it's so popular. So how do you prep the ackee? How do you cook it? Great question. And the reason why from a tin is the best. If you prepare it wrong, i.e. harvest it when it's not ripe or under prepare it, it is known to be toxic. It has toxicity levels of things that your body just does not agree with. So you absolutely don't want to get it wrong. However, by buying it in a tin, somebody's taken all of that risk away from you and it is always consistently reliable. It's a very, very simple recipe once you've got the ingredients. So a big tin like that, you can get from UK supermarkets for between four and five pounds. So again, quite expensive as a tinned food, but I'm sure you can get fresh ackee somewhere in London. I've never seen it, but then maybe that's because I've never looked out for it. What I do know is in a tin, it's very affordable, very uh, easily got hold of, again, stocked in supermarkets, um, and you know that it's always consistent and safe. Interestingly, I think the only way you're going to buy that is if you know what you're doing with it. But what I'd love to do is go to the international aisle in a supermarket and find some tins of things that I don't recognise, like the ackee, buy them, and then research what to do with them to make the most out of them, because that is delicious and I've never had that before. What you just described is the journey that I've been on the last week in preparation for this. And you realise there's so many great people out there cooking their national dishes as beautifully as that, and then we can recreate it. That is cool. I'd be fascinated to see what else you could do with that, because that is delicious. Tin food, still gets a bit of a bad rap. And to be honest with you, often fresh food, if put side by side with tin food, is going to be better. However, there are so many circumstances where the benefits of tin food, whether it's consistency, the price, the accessibility, the safety of it, or if you're in the middle of wild camping and want something in a tin, like there's always a situation where tin food does have a role. Absolutely. I think the main thing that I've taken away from this is that canning something from the other side of the world is an amazing way for someone like me to taste something brand new um, from, a, from a culture that just 
does such an amazing job with it. I've never thought of tin foods as before as a method of food exploration. You know, at the moment, I can't travel to Jamaica. I would love to go. If this is the next best thing, and it's made possible by tinned food, then it's a massive win for me. This is what's great about having you on the other end of the camera. Let us know what tinned foods, dishes, should we be trying from different countries and cultures that are different from the UK? And who should we be looking at as experts, as contributors, as chefs, to get involved and teach us how to make the most of those ingredients? Because if we can travel the world from our studio here in London, whilst we can't actually travel the world, then I think that's a win for all of us. 100%. Do you ever have one of those days where you just can't be asked to cook anything? Well, we certainly do. So we've put together volume two of our best-selling club book, CBA to Cook. It's a load of simple recipes which have been hacked by our chefs to make life so much easier those days you just CBA. Head to sorted.club forward slash bookshop to get your copy. And now for a blooper. During lockdown, I've gone through waves of trying to eat healthily and then just going on an utter blowout. And there's been times where I've got up at one in the morning absolutely ravenous and eaten things like uh, pita bread out the bin, slices of Edam. So if I was in a similar situation knowing I had a, a cheeseburger in a tin, I can see myself eating that at one in the morning easily.